Lots of desperation from our Gen.G fans. Yeah. There's a well, lot of Gen.G faithful that often turn up, as uh, we've got Gen.G, speaking of which, uh, piling in on top of a ward. You know, that is some value from Tucson. The Gen.G fans, I think that what they're doing with that yell, though, is they're, they're trying to give Gen.G the Spirit Bomb, because that's uh -huh. what they're going to need. Uh, but that's not going to... I don't think that that's going to arm in time. I don't and think I so either. And I feel like the actual Spirit Bomb will be the Requiem. Yes. As so Genji do uh, understand that they have been on top of the ward, but you can see Kaz is already in position to start up the uh, enemy now, red buff. We've seen Karthus appear in Europe. He's also in Challengers Korea, but he hasn't really shown his head in the LCK. And I don't think that he's shown his head in the LPL. I'm very adamant that he's the best jungler in the game. I've been very vocal about that for quite some time now. One of the reasons that he hasn't been picked, according to some Korean players that I've asked at the LCK, is they don't think that he's that strong in the early time. But the problem is, is that he doesn't need to be. Mm -hmm. Because there's no jungler that can keep up with his clear speed. And the bomb that he provides, just with his immense pressure, is insane. So here, Cuz... Oh, he's going to be pathing. spotted. Yeah, he is going to be spotted, which is a little bit unfortunate. It does look like he's just going to pick up this golem. He's actually going to consume, it looks like, the whole camp. So not just going to leave one of the little Krugs alive so that it doesn't allow for the respawn to occur. And now he's transitioning into his blue side. And another thing about Karthus that's interesting is, I think that one of the reasons that maybe a lot of players were hesitant to pick him up is... Oh my goodness, oh. that's an Ignite coming in from Tucson. The Gleaming Quill will be available. The Flash after. This is Battle Rakan. One more auto attack and the solo kill. First blood for Tucson's Rakan. Yeah, that happened. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I think the jungle is over. You it was already you, over, let's it, be honest. Karthus was picked. Yeah, it, it, it really... Well... As, as weird as that sound, you, you don't get to fall behind against this champion. It's sort of like Nidalee, but more oppressive because he presses R while farming. Yep. It's one of the coolest things in the game. <laughs> and then he gets Dark Harvest stacks. Yeah. And then it gets to a point that once he has the jungle item, he moves while farming. Because the patience won't expire, so it's really cool. Now, I like what Tucson comes in here and does. He finds Peanut inside of the jungle, and he ignites him early. And I guess uh, what Peanut's thinking oh, is that... Oh, Death Flash. Feels bad. I, I think, I guess... He, uh, uh, I got it. He's like, what is he, what is he, what is he doing? <laughs> he was trying to give it to yeah. Death, and he... Oh, he accidentally auto. Feels bad. Oh, that's adorable, though. So Death is tilted, so that might be something that Gen.G can play around. One of the things, though, is that Cuz does have two camps that haven't been consumed yet. And so they're anti-rubber banded right now. Yeah, and that's actually denied camps yes. here from Peanut. So, which are the two most important camps for Karthus. Peanut comes back in here, confirms that it hasn't been consumed yet. Yeah, Pawn's gonna clear that one out. Gets that last remaining popcorn chicken. And gets back to fly in the mid lane. He was losing out on a bit of a trade there in mid, and actually you can see he's half the CS of fly. But this is a full mini wave and a half being thrown in towards Pong. He's going to be very comfortable. All right, nicely done there from Russell. <laughs> this is a pick that actually I wanted to see Nogari pick up a little bit earlier because Nogari's gangplank is absolutely phenomenal. You can note that our Rascal's gone towards the Grasp of the Undying just to give himself a little bit more staying power here in this lane. Cube looks like he's heading towards the on-hit build for the cannon as the Seismic Shove is going to miss Pong in the mid lane. Press the attack has been picked up. He does have Legend's Bloodline as well. Uh, looking like he wants to try to gank. Wall of Pain going to come down here. Yep, will be at a slow up fly for the moment. He is moving himself in the other direction though. Nice Q lands there from Pawn. The fly doesn't have to invest anything and Cuz just comes over. Will be able to get Pawn a bit of a, a more decent back timing and has the teleport of course to get himself in here if he would like to. But maybe Pawn doesn't even need to teleport and can start going aggressive onto Peanut's location. Lay waste is being thrown into this brush. Cuz, man, he's just everywhere. He's going to land there onto Fly. Cuz finds himself on the wrong side. Pawn looking to lock down Fly, but now Cuz taking a lot of damage. Here from Peanut, Seismic Shove gets Pawn back into range. The th threaded volley is fantastic. Cuz still has Flash somehow, gets the Flash knockup. 
does Peanut. Defile needs to come out as Cube makes the first rotation over. The Q lands, the W's there. And Kazi is going to lose his life. No Requiem available. He's only level five. Genji punished the Karthus. Karthus ended up getting shut down right there. That was some bizarre trade patterns by Pawn and Kuz. It did require Cube to come all the way down from top lane, though in order to make this work. Yeah, we're checking out the bottom side of the map is Deft and Toos. So Deft completely out of mana, as uh, he wants to trade with these guys. But let's have a look at this one yet again. Yeah. Kuz, I believe, gets so, at least the Raptor. Kuz ends up getting the entire Raptor camp, missing a lot of his Qs, wasn't toggling E either, so his mana was getting pretty low. He should have probably flashed way sooner, before the Jarvan even has the ability to try to knock him up, and he can throw Lay Wastes at Fly to make him angle up to the northwest. And at that point, he probably would have been able to get out. So, some bizarre play. And I mean, even prior to leading up to that, when Fly was below his Raptor camp, when uh, Pawning Husband was the gank, they backed off, which was really surprising. Yeah. Because pa Karthus is so powerful in a spot like that. It doesn't even matter if Peanut is in the Fog of War. You'll just end up one, you, you'll win the 2v2. And at that stage as well, you just want to farm yourself some Dark Harvest stacks. Doesn't yeah. matter if you die, just uh, get them Dark Harvest stacks, kill people afterwards. QV is uh, at least able to take down some of these barrels here. Doing a great job. Parlay not able to beat the auto attack speed of QV's cannon. And you can see it is confirmed uh, on hit cannon. Bilgewater Cutlass to come in. Requiem is available now on Karthus. So, Gangplank Ultimate and Karthus Ultimate both available. We can definitely have some bot lane parties. Anytime that Pawn is able to get priority in the middle lane. Let's see some CS actually. Yeah, eating through his Corrupting Potions very quickly as well. Does have that Time Warp Tonic to keep himself a little bit more topped up. Rascal up here towards the top side of the map just wishes that he could keep some barrels here on, in this lane. Struggling just a little bit. The culling flies out. Just avoiding some turret damage. Is death. His ruler and life just soaked that one up themselves. There's some warning shots coming out there from ruler. As our death does land the piercing light. Utilizes the guardian shield very nicely there as well. As Pawn's just wondering why Fly keeps hitting him with stuff. His Pawn just wants to clear out the minion wave. Does so very nicely and does have teleport to make it back to the lane as he goes back home one more time. Curious to see if the blue buff is going to go over to Karthus or if it will end up being handed off. Because does find the Talia, doesn't know about Peanut though. Weaver's Wall in Cataclysm. Yep, the Laywaste are going to come in here. Rascal does have Cannon Barrage available. The globals when it comes to damage is certainly something that they have to be careful of. Cuz going to give away his blue buff. As we were talking about before, Pawn was back in base and actually decides not to invest the teleport. Could have potentially got themselves down a yeah. award and been able to. They definitely at least could fight have 3v3'd that. that. Absolutely could have been able to 3v3 that right there. Some very bizarre pathing coming out of Cuz this game so far. So his advantage on Karthus not as large as it should be, especially not after that opening. True. Being able to so aggressively just tear apart the enemy jungle and the fact that Peanut was killed by a support in there himself. He's pathing right now onto the right-hand side of the map. They have the priority in the bottom lane. Looks like they want to make a move onto the enemy blue buff, but I think that Peanut should be able to eat that. Yeah, and... Uh, yeah, that's going to be the flash in, though. Gets the chain CC. Cuz lands the wall of pain. Cataclysm means that Tucson kills him again. 100% of the kills on the side of King Zone belong to the Rakan. See whether the Tucson's going to be able to transition that into anything else. Like you said, Berth are going to go down. Cuz is going to be able to grab that rubber banded Gromp Camp. And it looks like they're going to transition that once again into a Dragon. Without Peanut on the map, this should go over for free. And we take a look at the gold at the top, and Genji is ever so slightly ahead, but that should be expected with the Klepto on the Ezreal. The issue, though, is, is that they're not really ahead when you factor in the scaling. Yeah, well, can they actually steal away this Cloud Drake? The answer is no, as Ruler's taking so much damage. The Culling almost kills him just outright as Kuz does have his Flash available. Oh no, it's coming up very, very soon. I think he wants to... He'll get himself suicide. into the back of this pit. We'll see whether he does. He will just suicide. 
Requiem not going to be invested, and that is very strange. He had that flashback available, but decides that they were probably going to follow. As you can see, Rascal very, very low. Seismic Shove again going to land on the pawn. There it is. Rascal throws down the cannon barrage. Cube gets the solo kill under the turret. Oh, man. And just flashes to get himself out. Requiem? Is the Requiem actually going to come in before the back actually lands? And Cuz isn't even going to go for it. Oh, he doesn't actually have the jungle item. I think at it, it, that HP value, the jungle item would be necessary uh -huh. in order to get the kill right there. So, a little bit unfortunate. Just probably outside of the gold range in order to complete that. Well, Shelly should go down to Peanut here as Wall of Pain comes over. Cuz, can he actually get in? Looks for the lay waste. This is going to be a smite fight. The Weaver's Wall comes in. Cuz steals away Shelly. Oh. Picks her up as well before he goes down. And now the lay waste are landing. We'll see where the Requiem does come out. It's not going to be invested. Two some grand entrance in order to get himself out. And that was the suicidal play that we like to see as Rascal even steals oh, man. Peanut's... Oh my goodness, the flash in gets himself the passive, and Rascal, he's even got himself a kill. It's just the abuse case under the Jarvan right now. This game is just not for Peanut, as Pawn's oh, able to fly. take down Fly, looking for you it. You have to Here in the mid Carcass. lane. Yep, oh, there's the Requiem, the it. last Q is going to land. Oh, but a love shot. Yeah, the trade going to come in, the last threaded volley. Juve gets himself a plate on the top side. But Rascal, I think that he might have got himself just the advantage that he needs, and that plate isn't even going to go down. It's really unfortunate for Cube up here in the top lane. He does have a CS lead. What? We're going to go all the way back to watch <laughs> Peanut die again. Is this going to be like the, the Peanut death reel? Is that what this is? The Peanut eulogy replay? That's not what we want to see. Alright, Rascal eats some oranges. We're trying to take it in. Not K this time. Alright. This was the ultimate that ended up coming out. We didn't actually get to see how much HP QA had remaining. Nor did we see the sick 1v1 between yeah. Lissandra and uh, the Talia. You can see Tower Plates looking to go down again here on the bottom side. Death, can he actually get it? No, he can't. One more. No. Oh, no. Not quite. Karthus pushes away all of these minions. Still has the Rift Herald. It looks like he's probably just going to summon it down in bottom lane. Um, or he's going to go home. I think that you do just summon it down in bottom lane, then you use Rascal Gangplank Ultimate on the top turret. Yep. Try to live from Peanut. Right. Yep. Shelly is going to be thrown down there as Peanut does get himself the knock up. But you can see Rascal just shoots him in the face. And uh, Shelly's going to get her work done down here. I think is he's it missed. Right? Uh, I think there was a slight knock up there on the Rascal, but it looked a little bit misleading because oranges okay. were then eaten immediately after the spawn. Misses a Q. The Fly's going to miss his as well. Looking to turn this one around. We're sitting on Fly an ultimate a lot almost of damage. Yeah. for a pawn. Now the minion's actually helping out. The Shelly gets the double charge. Double charge completed. And Cuz down there in the bottom lane, he's already level 9. Yeah, Shelly is eventually taken out as Cuz taking a lot of damage there. Turret shot, I believe. Runic Echoes, like we talked about before, finally completed. Item Blaze finishes off that last minion. There's Agatha. They get destroyed here by Athena. Really trying can. to find something good on the map. To take Found for Agatha. Himself. And now look, he's going to get Scoodle. Oh, there we are. Scoodle Rivers goes down. Absolutely tragic. Heartbreaking, to be honest. But great news here for Cube on the on hit cannon. Blade of the Ruin King completed and will be out of destroy. The first turret of the game for Genji. It's going to be in response, though, to King Zone, and you can see the gold is very even. 1,000 gold in it means basically the King Zone's winning. One thing hit by so many side yeah. shots. Basically all of them. This is a living example of the power of Lissandra. Able yep. to get hit by absolutely everything, but. As long as you can locate the Q and E key, mm -hmm. you can still push in the wave and then eventually recall. Yeah. And, and if you mess up in a trade, press W, get that aftershock, and walk and away. And then, if you walk away and you're still losing out, you Just press, press the B button and or, then the D that. button straight back to the lane again when all of your health comes back. That's really nice stuff. As our rule is not able to steal away a blue buff with his ultimate. It's more difficult to do that these days. Skuz is looking to just kill whatever he can find on this map. It's not a champion. That'll give him level 10 so that he retains his one level lead. It looks like he's going to be itemizing straight into Void Staff as Gap actually eats the dragon. So that'll, that's 100 gold. 
Yep. He's going over to him. We all know who the carry is. He it's actually King's something own. I think is so undervalued that junglers don't allow the laners to do. When there's absolutely no chance of a, a contest, I think giving the dragon to yeah, the Yeah, now laner. that it's worth 100 gold. Yeah, yeah I agree. A little bit more of a recent tr uh, change than, yes. uh, than people expect, I think. It's only, uh, I think it was this year that it became worth 100 gold instead of the 25 that it's always been. Finally avoided there from Vaughn. Vaughn knows that you can now walk out of it. Nicely done. Barrel not going to find QV at all. Blade of the Room King traded for it. It uh, does get poked out. Cuvee is just really good at destroying barrels. Yeah, Cuvee is so far ahead in the CS department. That's where all of the gold is right now. Yeah. It's on the cannon, but unfortunately, he's not going to be able to as easily transition this into a lead for Genji because he's the on-hit split push style cannon instead of that team fighting cannon. So when we're looking for the engages for Cuvee, he's going to be using his ultimate for utility and it's going to be about the auto attacks that are really going to be locking things down. So, different cannon to watch in these team fights can still certainly work out. It's going to be mostly about side lane pressure. But Shove doesn't find Vaughn. Okay, Peanut once again getting hunted by Cuz. Right now we are in a little bit of a lull state yet again. You did say earlier that we were. Definitely due for some Cloud Drakes yep. tonight. So we are getting all of the Cloud Drakes. It is an overcast day. Yeah. Yeah. Here in very, King's Own versus Genji windy. game two. And King's Own, a little bit different than game number one. I think that they're even more content to just allow some of their champions to keep scaling. Yeah, as long the as they can playing. keep this map as wide open as possible, I think that as soon as Kuz misses out on his camps because Genji have too much map control, that's when you have a big problem. However, the Karthus is able to eat through so many camps so fast that they are putting the pressure onto Genji far more. Clearing out some control ward vision here is now okay. King's own looking for this top side pressure and Ruler's going to get pushed away from this outer turret. Low half health, but may not actually get taken down just here. Okay, just... Oh, never mind. Kings aren't easily able to get rid of it. Didn't know whether they'd have quite enough damage, but I was wrong. Juve sets up shop down here once again. Trinity Force is done here for Rascal. Okay, barrels are going to go down, and Juve is going to get slowed up. But look at this. He's not going to get deterred from destroying this turret on the bottom side. Red buff now going to be picked up by Karthus. Yeah, I'm actually out. Oh, never mind. He's actually going to save it. Yeah, he's going to give Should the rev off over yeah. solution, most likely. So Deft is going to have that one. Deft gets what Deft wants. And that's going to mean the King's Own are going to claw themselves back into this race towards the gold lead. Very, very close. About 200 gold is going to be in it. You see, 199 CS. 200 at 1850 is great. Oh, they want to make a play here against QV. But see, this is the first time ever Rascal has moved aggressively. Yeah. It doesn't even matter if Cubay has a ward or not. The story that Rascal's been telling this game, that movement isn't congruent with it. Nope. Something is definitely abnormal. You don't even have to be an elite level pro player to just know something is definitely off. Yep. And that something might be coming your way. So Cubay ends up just backing up. But pretty comfortable for Cuvee to be in this very long lane as the cannon. Extra movement speed with the lightning rush means that there's not a lot of chance here for King's Zone to actually get any ganks off. Especially not when the ganks are going to come in from Akathis. But trading farm is going to be in favor of King's Zone as this game moves further and further towards the late game. Their damage is going to be very comfortably mixed between AD and AP. They're going to have so much AoE. So much control with the Lissandra. It's just a bevy of things that you like to have in team fights. Yeah. Everything is going quite well. And so, okay. another barrel, but it does look like eventually this turret should fall. Yeah. Everyone moving to the Cloud Drake, but it's not a high priority target. Just give it away to Genji. 
it's not worth losing the game over, potentially. I mean, Cuz can try and steal with late ways, but there's no point in throwing your life away. I think you're exactly right. And that's what Kingzone decided to do as well. Four to five is going to be the kill score here as 20 minutes ticks over. Baron is alive. Oblivion Orb. Ooh. Ooh. Bad itemization. Is it? Yeah, let me what tell you why. What are you supposed to get? You're supposed to get Void Staff because the enemy already showed you. Aha! Well, Cannon Barrage comes down here. That's a very, very dead Peanut once again. That's a lot of damage. It's just by the Requiem. Peanut is so, almost all of the deaths. The Requiem will do a lot of damage only to Ruler and then I suppose Cannon until he gets maybe Wit's End, which I'm assuming. Could be next should, item. Could be the next item. And I think it would it would be actually a pretty good item with the Ezreal and the Talia in the team. But the reason that the Oblivion Orb on Karthus is so weird is that there's not any healing really on the side of Genji. Not too much. And then completing into Morel and Omicron just feels bad. Yep. It's quite a heavy commitment. And oh. the enemy team already showed that they were investing into magic resistance. And so you should just get the Void Staff. Well, QV. Gonna get barreled a couple of times, but not gonna be hit by the third as Kaz comes in. And QV walks away yet again. Like, what a great game of ping pong we've had here. Yeah. Really has been this that. Is the real focus. The Sailor Gangplank, he gave up on his pirated times. You know when you, you play Pokemon and there's the Sailor Pokemon trainers? Yep, that always have magic That's what like, bottom is. Yeah. Yeah, and it feels like Rascal is running around using Splash over and over there's again. a Gengar that just constantly keeps coming over. Yeah. Well, Kyuve decided not to go for a Wit's End. He's got a Kitsu's Rage Blade already picked up. So we have a look at the gold difference. This has been slinking between Kingzone and Genji, but never more once again than about 1.7. Echoes what was happening in game number one. And what has Genji always been struggling with, and that's been... Having control in anywhere outside of the late, late game, right? Genji as a team for many years has always been, we're going to beat you in late game team fights. Their early game pressure has not been there, so why not just draft Gangplank and Carpus? So here, looking like it's going to be like game number one. We got another uh, 17 minutes to go here, Atlas. Hey, but Def this time is 1-0-0. Zero, zero. Has himself a, uh, a bounty. So I'd say that this is actually going better for Kingzone. And uh, they won pretty comfortably. In the first game, Fly uh, comes on over. That control one yeah. is going to spot him. And eventually, this tower does go down. Carthus continues to farm, but he's not getting any edges. Man, this is almost like a flame horizon. Yeah. Oh my god. He's real scared. All right, Telling flies in. Def tries to clear out the minion wave. That was nerfed a while ago, though, so not going to be too helpful. Weaver's wall, not going to get Def into a sticky scenario, but he can't clear out the back lane line minions, and that is going to be the tower most likely falling down. Okay, not going to fall just yet. Def actually playing very far up. Ruler does manage to get the last auto attack, and a fair bit of damage as the pressure from Gen.G is starting to pile up. On. Up in top lane. All right, we'll take down the Inatara. That's going to get something back. That is so strange. Whoa. All right. Rascal trying to do his best holding on here. Kyuve is just so damn strong. Yeah. In any 1v1 scenario, it feels like he just has way too much control. Kutra Barrage is looking for the pirate, but he moves the other direction. Kyuve backs away. Because camp after camp after camp continues to have a level advantage here as the Karthus will go back home, Merlin Omicron most likely in hand. We've got a Zonya's Hourglass completed here for Pawn and a Dash Cannon. He's very happy. And Death is heading towards item number three. But Void Ruler Staff, finally. Scaling. Oh, he actually decided to go he for the Void Staff. actually got it. Okay, so nice. this is, now this is fine. Now everything is A-OK. -okay. You have the Oblivion Orb for the Ezreal yep. as well. So Ruler is almost getting true damage. In fact, actually, he might be getting true damage. Not entirely sure what Ezreal's magic resistance is right now, but with the Sword Cut Boots and the Oblivion Orb, the MR could definitely be super high. Yeah, could be that high. Slight advantage now for King Zone as far as gold is concerned, but we're not really looking at the gold here. Oh, 35. Yeah, he's he's. I think he actually is getting true damage. You get the 40% for the, uh, or you get... Kyuve. Yeah. He's just destroying any lane he enters. 
Rascal just has no answer. All right, well. So Kings on, yeah, they're gonna have to do something because obviously Rascal is having quite a bit of difficulty trying to maintain and contain the cannon split push. Jube heads over to eat the Cloud Drake. He's gonna be able to get it. So uh -oh. it's Buzz. He's just gonna get popped by Ruler. We'll see whether the Anger Requiem is going to come out. It's not. Cuz holds on to it. And uh, it's just really sad times. It's going to be Genji grabbing that Ocean Drake for free, but no extra being gained for King's own top side of the map. That's just a whoopsie. And uh, LS is uh, almost uh, falling out of his chair. Now I'm actually regretting being <laughs> excited about the Karthus because if they mess up the Karthus, you're going to be even more tilted. I, uh, yes. Because now we're just never going to see it again. Well, unless he just wins anyway. Mate, well, there you go. See? Mm -hmm. No, nah, people will look for reasons why it's sad. Well, on. He takes the ball. He's fine. Gets himself out. No vision available on Baron at the moment. Genji not going to opt in for it or anything like that. It's going to come down. We got 10 CS away from the Flame yeah. Horizon for QV. Oh, he's so far ahead. One last team fight is going to have to be what decides this game. As with another Ocean Drake, there's nothing too exciting. No. You can just give that away to Gen G, and then you have to wait for the Elder. So, as I told you at 23 minutes Atlas, we had 17 minutes remaining. Yep. 13 to go here. QV is 3,000 gold ahead. That's a lot of gold. Yep. Yeah. I, I do believe that um, it's like 2,000 plus 1,000. It's a big amount of money. Yeah. Large money. Bloodthirster. Interesting. All right. Completed for the cannon. Double life steal, overshield, okay. I guess he uh, wants to be able to just be an immovable object inside of the split push, and that's the win condition now for Gen G. He's gonna do a lot of damage, but he's still going to pop if anyone comes near him. One comes along over. I don't think that Fly actually saw him make his way in there. No, probably did actually spot him. King Zone fighting for control top side of the map and QV continuing just to try and make himself a nuisance here on the bottom side. Execution is calling has been picked up by a Rascal just to deny the lifesteal on the cannon. It's absolutely terrifying. The fact that that even had to happen. Lucian will be able to at least take down his red buff. Clears out the chicken's camp as well and now he'll be able to grab that mid lane. I'll let you get rid of that. Uh, Cannon creep, but QV is getting ever closer. That's a real deep teleport. That though. is. He's going the distance. Yeah. Yeah, QV, you're you're not long for this world, buddy. Cannon barrage comes in. That's gonna be the ultimate. There's no QSS. The barrel is going to be utilized, and that's it. A thousand gold picked up into the back pocket of the gangplank. Did come at the cost of the gangplank ultimate, though, which I'm not entirely sure if it was necessary, given that Tushin. It'll be up relatively quickly. Yeah. I mean, there is some CDR already, 20% completed. Yeah. And Tucson, like you say, uses the redemption to spot out that Baron Pit. It's not going to be done in response from Gen G. So it looks like Kingzone just kill the rat and walk away scot free. As LS slumps back in his chair, wondering why no one is doing anything on Summoner's Rift. Why Gen G is just letting Kingzone kill their cannon with no response. Well, the, the thing is, is that there's a lot of options available, but people don't... All right, now Baron is yeah. going to get started. There we go. Yeah. The coin flip. Yeah. I think it's actually... Oh, oh they are going to pull away. Tucson, they're looking for they, it. The grand entrance gets uh, the Rakan out of there. Definitely could have burst it, and they just didn't know that they could have burst it. Yeah. Those are the saddest parts. Yeah, well, when no. you pull off the Baron before the enemy actually commits. Control Ward's going to be replaced too soon as the Grand Entrance and the Black Battle Dance. Cuz not going to wow. actually give him any options there. As Tucson says, come on, man. Push up Barrage, but that's just Cuz with no smite necessary. Just uh, takes his own blue buff. Very easily done. Want to actually uh, have a look at Cuz to see how many of his uh, Dark Harvest stacks he's picked up. I'm sure it's not too many at this stage. But as Rascal keeps piling on these items one after the other, what do you reckon the next couple are? Do you reckon we go for some crit? The portal reminder is really, really, really surprising to me because there's no armor 
on the side. He just wanted to turn his execution as cold. Yeah, I, I guess that that's what he's aiming for there, but I do suppose that crit is probably the the next path that Gangplank ends up going. Do you go Static Shiv and a uh, Infinity Edge or something like that? Because you've already got the Lifeline no. passes taken up by the Steric's Gauge. I think that the Static Shiv is not good because they already have so much MR. Uh huh. And you don't need the Shiv at this point for Wave Flare anymore uh, because um, the game uh, just. What, what, what's this behind enemy lines? Look at Pawn. He's doing an Owen Wilson impression, but that's a great prediction there from Peanut. Puts Pawn in the Cataclysm, doesn't have his claw, does get the Cell Fault off. As Rascal finds some barrels, the Requiem's going to come in. This is all the AoE, and Pawn's even able to survive for so incredibly long. They trade it one for one as Cuz is going to find his way forward. The quickness is going to tag up Cuvee. Takes so much damage from Death. Double tap, and he's dead. And that is Cuvee with such a huge advantage for, Ki for Gen G. Just falling down, and Kingzone being able to transition into this beautiful ocean break. Oh, I know how exciting. Yeah. That's great. That dragon is. That's what you wanted. <laughs> that is definitely what you wanted after that kind of a commitment in a fight. As, I mean, I guess one of the upsides, though, is that Cuz gets to walk away from this. He's almost level 16 here on the Karthus, and I really What's like the... Secret Agent Lissandra. Oh, yeah, secret, Never mind me. That secret Agent knockup Lissandra. Was great from Mid tier 1 tier of Genji is still alive, so it's not even like he's going for one of those kind of flanks. Yeah. Weaver's Wall came in here, Requiem being cast by Karthus. And Dep was able to pick up the kill on the Peanut, and then shortly thereafter, Cube oh, the wanted flash. to get himself an orange. Got to get himself yeah. some of the gameplay barrels, so. Sometimes there's some tasty things in those barrels, though, LS. You know, you can't uh, you can't put a man down. You want to have a look what's inside. Having conversations about fine wines. You told me that you've never actually had one. Yeah, so I how would you know how valuable they are? I just, you know what? You got me. Yeah, see, there you go. There you go. Someone's got to stick up for QA and what he believes in. I believe in his love of taking down barrels. Genji now actually milling about this Baron pit. Seeing what they can do. He's actually going to get a little bit upset. The control vision is available here for King Zone. So he I doesn't want to be tanking this one up. They just want to start it. Yeah, QA's going to have to teleport oh, if he wants to find his way forward. But Trisha Barrage, yeah, that's not going to lose damage as it goes forward. Ruler not going to get tagged up by these barrels. And Rascal, if he's going to have an impact later on in this game, He's going to have to land those. But that was King Zone's opportunity to go for a Baron, and now it's done because Cubey is very, very close to knocking down this inhibitor turret. And it does look like we are destined to have to wait for the Elder Dragon, just like in game number one, Atlas. <laughs> yep, it's feeling like that once again. But I think now Genji do at least have the. Oh my goodness, once again, Owen Wilson behind enemy lines, Lissandra. <laughs> Here on we the need top some, side of the map. We need some James Bond music for this stuff. Yeah, or some Pink Panther music, depending on what yeah. one's actually going to do here. There's Peanut. He's going to walk right into it. There's a circle of frost. Yeah. Floor comes out. Vaughn says, I have the information. I'm the best <laughs> control ward on this map. Peanut yeah, gets his control ward over. But look at this. King's own. They have the vision. They know that he's there. No issues. We're looking for a Guardian Angel next, I believe, for Rascal. As the BF Sword's there, unless he wants to go just straight into the Infinity Edge instead. I like the extra damage, though. Clear out minion waves as quickly as you can. That's a big old overshield there for Cube. And uh, Ellis is making some real uncomfortable eye contact right now. He's just, why are they not doing anything? That's what I read. That's what you read? Yeah, that's what I read. All right. Well, that's the at least broadcast appropriate thing of what I read. Okay. I like that. Guardian Angel should be able to be completed here soon, actually, by Rascal. As we uh, we got two minutes to go until the Elder. So remember the 40-minute mark. I, I told you about that. 23 minutes. So. Yep. yep. We've got we got a little bit longer to go. We need to hang on tight. All right. I'm hanging. All right. I'm hanging. Okay. 200 gold difference between these two teams. King's own one kill in advantage. Look at that. The Wall of Pain is down, and then they go for the sick play of the backs. Arthas is almost 16, and with Pawn having, I, I think he already has 40% CR, he full I think giving the XP over to Karthus would be a much more valuable choice. But I don't think they would have been able to you actually get there to get that one done. Grand Entrance gets Tucson out of there. Control Ward goes down. Pawn's able to get rid of this vision here in the Wolf Pit. And uh, the Baron has been started yet again. King's own with their 
Caught their pants down just a little bit. They do get the vision, oh, but man. are they just going to commit to this? Ruler playing frontline. Wall of Pain goes in and once again, Genji back away because they know that they're going to have the advantage here on the bottom side. Cube looking to break oh. over that inhibitor turret, and he does so. Baron now going to get started. You've got the 1v1 coming in here between the Gangplank and Cube. But look at that, he's got so much lifesteal, he's completely comfortable. As now Rascal's going to get taken down. Pawn looking to make his way in. The Requiem is going to come down as well. But this will mean that Kingzone will have to give away this Baron. Oh no. No. It's Karthus. not going to go down. Karthus did too much damage with his Requiem. Yeah, Karthus had other plans in mind. Oh my goodness. So now Elder Dragon will be going over to King Zone most likely. Well, there are. Uh, I mean, Tucson did die. As uh, Death looking to push this wave up. Relentlessly pursued forward. That's not how the word pursue works. Actually, it's. Cube has teleport up, but so does Rascal. Rascal does not have his game plank ultimate available, however. It is halfway back up, though. This is, oh, man. All right, never mind. Lay waste. They were looking real juicy for a second. Because might have to go for a Hail Mary, ha Hail Mary heal here. Frozen Tomb is happen? available. Yeah. Oh, gets himself in. over. Yeah, they're going to go for this 50-50. There's the pullback. But Karthus is dead, but he's in his death to fight. All right, we're looking for the Elder Drake. It is going to get pulled away from the Layway do go down. And oh, Peanut. Peanut is incredibly low. Deft is inside this pit. That's Rascal. He's got the gigantic shield from the Seraphs. There's the, the Redemption. Tucson picks up the kill on the fly. Oh! That's going to be the Elder. It's taken by Deft of all people. Genji do manage to win out on the fight. They lose two members. Only three left alive, but they don't even get the buff that they were looking for, and they're the only ones with the smite. Yeah, that was a really unfortunate circumstance. I'm curious to see if they're going to try to end the game here. Only 10 seconds, though, on Karthus. Yeah, there's another 13 oh, left on Tucson That's as well. That's a lot of damage. Yeah, they will be able to break open the base. Peanut is very close to going down. If Death can actually stop these oh, backs, Requiem. Requiem is available. Oh, Karthus. They are going to spot it. There we go. See you later, guys. That's a double kill. And that should be King Zone picking up the Baron and possibly breaking the base open themselves. And so now the top inhibitor, they don't have a teleport. Oh, they do actually have one available on Pawn. Curious if Deft is actually going to be able to spot him out here. He oh, did. Oh, that was blind oh, as well. Man. Stops that back. Winter's Bite doesn't he? land. He's looking just to push this one forward. You can see how bloodthirsty Deft is. He's got so much damage. The only member of the team that does have the Elder Drake buff. But who else do you need it on, basically? That top inhibitor turret is down incredibly low. The mid lane inhibitor turret is dead. And Kingzone, they have one thing on their mind. It is going to be that Baron. Barrels come Pawn. in, yeah, they feel up. like they've certainly got to the scaled up stage. And they're going to leave a control ward in this bit because they know no one's going to get over here. They can't challenge for this one. The Baron dies in an instant. And now the Doom push is all that Kingzone need as the smoke and mirrors of Genji, which is the split push cannon, is not an option anymore because now Kingzone can basically say, no, you're coming to us. Yeah. Or we're going to end the game, but first, we're going to take a little bit of a pause here. Uh, yeah, a this is still the LCK, all right? Calm the down. LCK. Calm okay. down with your proactive blade on. Yeah, take a look at this. They take the Blast Cone over, and then interestingly enough, Fly doesn't use the Weaver's Wall at all, and so Deft and friends are able to come back into this. Wall of Pain came down, Rascal. Trying to get some good barrels off. Tushin comes in with the quickness. Pawn on the right-hand side. And right here, Peanut goes all the way back in to try to add a little bit of damage there. And he ended up smiting, I believe, the champion. Did he? I don't think he was in smite range of the Elder Yeah, that was strange. really strange. Look at how many of these shots that he tanked. That was... Really sick. Uh, this All is, the burn This damage. is the best feeling in the world when Karthus is on your team. It's the worst when you're against it. Oh no, even he's <laughs> <exalted>. <laughs> yeah. it says, please. 
Oh, look at him. Let's go fast. Let's go fast. Cuz was very excited about that record of doing so much damage. And now, this is all the advantage going over to King Zone. We haven't checked in with the gold for a little while, but it's 5,000 in the lead of King Zone after all is said and done. Yeah. I mean, it's 40 minutes, though. So gold. Yeah. Doesn't really, everyone's basically full item at this point, so it doesn't matter all that much. Culling does a fair bit of damage, guys. Yeah. Just want to point that one out. A fair bit. Ah, uh, this is the problem. When you are essentially a poke and siege comp and you are met with Baron. And also, Kennen doesn't want to be here. He doesn't want to be in his base trying to defend. He wants to be split pushing. True Shot Barrage does no damage to these Baron up minions. Nexus turrets are now falling down as Rascal is going to get booped back. The Gangplank on the wrong side of the wall, but he has the GA. Peanut is going oh. to die as he gets just onto the fountain, but that is not enough. Pawn oh. flashing on forward. Oh my god, the damage onto the cannon as Kaz gets so much health back, but it doesn't matter. The next